Professor Ferdi Grandori, Chairman of uh, HEAL uh, Hearing Across the Lifespan, and Alessia Paglialonga, uh, Scientific Organizer. Uh, this conference is uh, organized by uh, you and uh, our colleagues, uh, American colleagues from the United States. Uh, which uh, specific contribution uh, um, from the different cultures, uh, scientific cultures? Well, we had many contributions from many countries all over the world in general. Um, we have some specific sessions with uh, reports on international screening programs, for example, from many countries. And we also have some other regular, yes. let's say, sessions or special sessions from colleagues all over the world. Uh, in particular, many colleagues from the U.S. helped to organize some special sessions, uh, some research sessions, which we are now <laughs> uh, listening to today in these days. And so the international footprint is quite uh, remarkable this year in this conference, I should say. Yeah, I wouldn't see any real difference between uh, uh, the two sides of the ocean. Uh, the, the only differences are um, in the way at which some of the phenomena are looked in terms of uh, maturation. For instance, in the in, um, European Union, probably there are many more audiologists or hearing scientists that are already mature, ready to think about, for instance, adult hearing screening. Instead, uh, um, US, uh, this is typical of the US mentality, unless uh, all the building blocks are uh, set uh, exactly uh, in their own place that we not start. But then when they start, like for Google Hearing Screening, they are uh, running at a uh, uh, rate of uh, 4 million babies per year. Why in the old good Europe, because we started first, then US, we are still discussing issues about uh, who should do the job. Uh, France is not yet doing, for instance, part of the Switzerland is not yet doing. And uh, believe it or not, in Austria, and Austria set the standard in 1997, uh, 70 years ago, they are still uh, checking the babies or screening the babies more normally. So if one of the two years give a, a positive result, the baby is over. So there are not differences, uh, <coughs> deep differences, actually. And uh, what about the most important topics of this conference? This is a very good question, because we have many important topics in this conference. As uh, this year the conference is called Hearing Across the Lifespan, as we are having many contributions across the different age groups. So we are talking about screening, early identification, early intervention in the different target groups. So, uh, I think that we have many topics to present it, uh, and maybe some, a growing number of uh, presentations on research on the brain and cognitive aspects and the interrelationships between hearing and uh, central uh, contribution, central aspects in the normal brain. Maybe this is a particular, uh, let's say, growing topic in this, uh, in this edition. Yeah, I, I fully agree on that. Uh, it's a sort of uh, revolution that uh, uh, the way in which uh, audiologists or hearing scientists uh, look at hearing impairment. Um, too many still think about peripheral or hearing impairment that has nothing to do with understanding the codification, decoding, and uh, cognition. Instead, uh, hearing means everything, periphery, midbrain, um, brainstem, central areas, association areas, and cognitive process. And uh, which are the next uh, challenges on uh, hearing and hearing care, in your opinion, in the world? Well, there are still many uh, unmet needs, particularly for the adult and older adult population, because there is lack of guidelines, of indications, or even tools to address the needs of the adults for the early identification of hearing, because we know of hearing problems, sorry. We know that many people live with their hearing problems, don't seek help, so there is a big 
unmaxed with this population who might benefit if they would get early identification and targeted treatment for their for their hearing problems. Another extremely important issue that is uh, just opening many, many new perspectives for research is the uh, relationships between uh, hearing, cognition and uh, neuro uh, degeneration of central uh, uh, areas. So this is really a new area. I mean, many have been studying this, but now uh, when uh, we are talking this morning of about one 0.6 billion people with hearing impairment on our globe. The perspective is becoming more and more tangible and important. Thank you so much to both of you. Thank you.